Hey everybody, RetroPyGuy here. Today we're going to be doing a gameplay demo and review of this brand new Pow Kitty RGB10 handheld gaming console. This particular game console does come in this gray color that you see here, as well as black and yellow. For today's video, we're going to start by doing an unboxing portion of this, where we unbox this brand new um, black RGB10 handheld gaming console, followed by a three game gameplay demo, and then we'll come back here and we'll talk about what we liked and what we didn't like about this particular handheld device. Now I will say before we get started, there's two ways to go about using one of these. They do come with a brief game collection card, already stock, it pre, comes pre-inserted into the micro SD card slot up here. It's a 32 gigabyte micro SD card. Um, it does have a fairly decent selection of games on here. Um, but we're going to walk through, we're going to do a side-by-side -side comparison between that card that comes stock on these and the new RetroPie Guy uh, 400 gigabyte game collection card, which has over 16,600 retro video games pre-installed on it. Um, it's a really nice card. So we're also going to be doing a video that kind of showcases that a little bit more um, to follow this video up. But we are going to do a side-by-side -side comparison so you can see these two different options that you have when purchasing one of these. So let's get started. All right, so we're going to take a look at the box here. Uh, it says Pow Kitty here in the corner, RGB10. Uh, it's a nice solid box, no bend to it or anything, so super secure. So let's go ahead and open this guy up. Here we have our console sitting right on top. Got the manual underneath here. So here we have a brief manual. We open this up. Got some basic instructions. It shows out, it shows the layouts here. A couple different language options and where all your buttons and what their functions are. We also have a pack here of analog stick covers. So you can put these on. They have all different um, grip options on here. So you can see this one's got a few ridges and a circular configuration. Um, some of these have different uh, little prongs and points to them. So you can go in and use them however you'd like. Um, we'll take a look at this stock too, what comes on here without putting one of these on. And then we have our charging cable. This is a USB cable, connects right at the top of the um, console up here. You can plug it into your computer directly to charge or into a uh, power adapter that plugs into the wall. You could use your um, iPhone or cell phone charging adapter, plug directly into your power outlet. So we'll set this aside, we'll open up this packaging here. So here you can see our device. Let's take a quick measurement here and see exactly what the size is so you can get an idea. This is about five and a half inches wide, um, two and a half inches tall. So it's pretty compact. You can see that if we flip this over, we have our L1 and L2 here on the left-hand side, R2 and R1 over here. We have a jack here where we could put a headphone set or plug this into a speaker, I imagine. We have our power cable here. We have our micro SD card slot here with the stock game collection card that comes with this. We have our analog stick here on the left, our start and select, our A, B, X, Y buttons, our plus and minus up here, and our D-pad. Now, if we flip this to the bottom, we can see that we have our USB port here where we can connect, could connect this to a computer. On the side, we have a reset button here, as well as our power button. No options on the right-hand side of this. So now we're gonna actually go in and we're gonna look at this two ways. So when you purchase this, it comes with a micro SD card already inserted in here. If we go ahead and push down on this, we'll see it pops right up. It's a, not a name brand card or anything like that, but this is a 32 gigabyte card. It comes with some games already pre-installed on it. It's not a huge selection. Um, we'll get into that right now. We'll power this guy on. So we'll go to our power button here, hold that for a couple of seconds and allow this to boot up. So it uses Emulac. So if we go through here, we can see this is a theme here. We have the Capcom system one, two, and three. You can see as you let it set in, well, it was working there. Yep, when you let it load, it shows you the amount of games for each. So 32, 37, four games for this one. Here's Dreamcast here, three games. So you can see it's not a massive selection by any means, but it'll get you started. Game Boy is only two games. Game Boy Advance, 242, so that's a larger selection there. Game Boy Color, 1479, so 
Those are pretty good, but I know for the majority of these, there's not a huge selection. 272 for MAME, that's pretty small considering how many games are on there. Master System 63, Mega Drive's got two games, N64, four games, Nintendo DS, one game, Neo Geo, 131. And you can see this theme is pretty much the same as what you would get on a Pi Boy DMG. The Nintendo System 752, PC Engine, seven games. We have ports, which says 14 games. Let's see what that looks like. These are likely just the uh, previews, like pretty much the same as what you would get on a Pi Boy DMG if you're going with the stock software for that. PSP, three games. PlayStation, three games. One game there for Scum, what do we have? One game. And then we have RetroPie, which is going to be your settings here. But as you can see, it's not really RetroPie. This is just a theme. It's really Emulek, which you saw when booting up. So these don't work super well. I'll tell you that right off the bat. But we're going to go through this two ways. We're going to go ahead and demo it stock. And then we're going to go with the 400 gigabyte RetroPie Guy Ultimate Game Collection card for this particular device. We've gone ahead and made a full game collection card that works super well with this device. It's got over 16,600 games. Um, remember what this looks like because when you see the next one, it's gonna it's gonna blow you away. It's totally different. So let's go in here. Let's demo one game on this version. And if we jump in here, we can see that there are pictures. Now, if you take a look at the list here, I'm gonna zoom in so you can see a little bit better. Gives you a little gameplay demo, but the list there, it's coded. So you, it's really hard to figure out what these are. Like if you, let's go to one that we know, Marvel Superheroes. It says MSH. We would never know that MSH is Marvel Superheroes. So it's kind of frustrating in that regard. Um, they don't set this up for you super well. We'll go through here. I'll do it close so you can see. You know, the Pokemon ones are a little more straightforward. Mario Kart, there's no graphics or video for most of these. You can see they're all blank. Um, there are some here for MAME. It looks like it gives you a little gameplay preview. But again, a lot of these are abbreviated. They're not easy to find by any means. Um, I did go through here in great detail at one point. A lot of them are that are spelled out. There are some issues with the spelling, so sometimes they don't even populate in alphabetical order correctly. So let's go in here and look at Mario Kart. One thing I'm going to point out right off the bat, the sound is really good on this. Um, you can see it's super clear. So I'm using the analog stick exclusively on this one. Which makes sense since the N64, you, that's how you'd be steering. See, it runs really smooth. I don't know how to use the special on this, you know, when you get the power up. I'm not sure how to try to figure out how to hit that. Oh, there we go. It's the minus button to use the boost. All right, so I'm going to jump out of this. To do that, you hit both the start and select at the same time. You actually hit them twice. 
So now we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna shut this thing down. So we'll hit the start button here. We'll jump down to quit. And we'll shut this down properly. Shut down system, really shut down yes. And we'll let this shut down. I'm gonna go ahead and swap out the card. Actually, I'm gonna just switch the entire device here because I have it already set up on my gray version. All right, so now we're gonna take our gray handheld console here. We're gonna put in our RetroPie Guy 400 gigabyte ultimate game collection card for this device, which has over 16,600 retro video games on it, which is just a massive selection. So we'll go over here, we'll hold down the power button and we'll let this boot up. So I'm just gonna let you see how this one boots up. It's very different in every way from that other one. All right, so this is our landing page here. It comes right into the Amiga games, and you can actually set that to come to whatever you want on here. But we're just gonna scroll through some of the game options here. Shows a brief little demo over here in the left-hand corner, as well as a list of games. So for this particular one, there's 114 games. It's got pretty much all the Ataris. MAME, which has over 2,502 games on here. That's an insane amount of games just in one collection. I think that's more than the other card has throughout everything. What's nice too is we have the background, we have the video in the corner. Really nice layout here. Super clean, easy to navigate. Get some little graphics. Another thing I want to point out is the Nintendo hacks on here are awesome. There's so many hacks on here. Um, 690 games just for the Nintendo Entertainment System. We keep jumping through here, the Virtual Boy, uh, Super Nintendo, Hacks, N64, 294 games. I've played the majority of these. Everything works super well. Another thing that I want to point out, obviously I have all the Game Boy games. Um, Game Boy Advance, 1080. Nintendo DS, Neo Geo, and all the classics, everything. Pokemon Mini, 23 games. Sega. Now Sega Dreamcast, 103 games. This is kind of rare because Dreamcast is what we refer to as our cutoff system in most cases. That's one of the newer options on here. Now I know Dreamcast is by no means new, but what I mean by that is for retro gaming, Dreamcast is one of the later systems that works on here. So in the case of RetroPie, for example, Dreamcast only has a handful of games that actually work well on the RetroPie Guy game collection card that we have our 256 gigabyte one. We only have, um, I think like 23, 24, something like that, um, Dreamcast games, because we only put what works flawlessly on it. So to have 103 here is really unique. So we're actually gonna demo a couple of the Dreamcast games, just because I think that's one of the more advanced systems on here, graphically, and like I said, it usually doesn't work. So um, same here, PlayStation. Uh, 274 games, that's a huge selection. Now PSP, we have 89, PSP Mini, 200. These are also newer systems, so the fact that they can work on here is really unique. You're not gonna find that in a lot of um, situations. So we also have custom collections, we have the all games lists, you can see here 16,674 games. Massive, just a massive list. So if we actually jump into these now, you can see this is how each game collection looks. You get a little preview here. It's, it's very similar to RetroPie. You have your text list here, and then down here you have your description of each game. And that's the case for everything. So if we jump between different collections, you can see it's pretty much the same setup. Each one has some box art as well as the gameplay demo. So let's get into one of these now. We'll do a demo, like I said, of a Dreamcast game. So we're over to the Dreamcast now. We're gonna jump down to um, Gauntlet Legends, actually, which is one of my favorite games growing up. And what's really cool about this is it's really hard to get this working on a lot of systems. This one in particular, it, you have it for PlayStation, you have it for N64, and you have it for Dreamcast. It was also a arcade release in the late 90s. I think it came out in 1998, if I'm not mistaken. Now, the Dreamcast by far has the best graphics, and I have not been able to get it to work on any other system. So the fact that we can get it to work so well on this, 
is really impressive. These graphics are the same as if you were using this on the arcade version. So I can use the D-pad as well as the analog sticks here. No lag whatsoever. Alright, so we're going to jump out of this to exit the game. Your hotkey is always going to be your start and select, just like on RetroPie. So we'll hit those. It'll say press again to quit. So we hit both of these together, which is nice that it's kind of configured that way where they're in a uh, circle together. It's easy to hit both of them. Alright, so we're going to jump into Sonic the Hedgehog CD for our final gameplay demo. Alright, so that was really good. There's no lags or anything like that. So we'll go ahead and exit this. Alright, so we're gonna go ahead and shut this down to shut down. You go to start, down to quit here. And most of these settings on the main menu work just like RetroPie does. You can go in, you can update, you can change your layout, you can change your theme, um, you can scrape, you can do your network settings, connect to your Wi-Fi, alter your sound settings. Game collection settings, everything runs pretty much the same on Emulite as it does on RetroPie. So we're going to go ahead and shut this down and we're going to talk about what we liked and what we didn't like about this. Alright, so we just went in, we played three games. We played one game on the original game collection card that comes stock on these. And then we played two games on the RetroPie Guy Ultimate Game Collection card for the Pow Kitty RGB 10 handheld device. Um, obviously, I'm going to like our version a lot better. I think everybody is though. You can see the difference here. It's night and day. Um, our collection card has 16,674 games on it. Um, theirs has, I don't even know, I didn't even count them, but I would say around 2,000 if that. Um, their version is also, all the games are abbreviated. Some of them are even misspelled, which, you know, it is going to be a problem if you're going in and you're searching for things. If you're not familiar with the exact uh, title of it. Obviously, you're going to have trouble finding it. Some of the game collections only have one or two games, which, um, I mean, it gets you started. It's not going to be the collection you want to live with on a device like this, but certainly there's plenty of stuff to do on there if you wanted to just buy the stock version. I'm not here to try to persuade you to buy our product over theirs, but whatever you want to do is fine. In terms of the console itself, um, everything on here is made really well. 
Um, Pow Kitty has put out, in all honesty, some crap over the years. I'm not going to mince words here. We actually work with Pow Kitty directly. We sell their products. Um, we Let me correct that. We sell some of their products. This is one that we sell because we approve of it. We like it. Um, that being said, they have put out some crap over the years. It is what it is. This isn't one of those things. You can look up my review versus anybody else's. Everybody's pretty much saying the exact same thing. These are really well made. Um, the buttons work well. They're not loud. I'm jumping on the B button here, barely making any noise. So if your kids are going to be using this in the backseat of the car, they're not going to annoy the heck out of you with it. Um, what else? All the buttons work well. There's no binds. There's nothing like that. Uh, battery life on here lasts a long time. All right. What else? So another thing, the D-pad on here is a really good size. You can see that it moves super well. Um, I'm picky with D-pads if they're not big and they're really compact. It's super hard to navigate with them. Think back to like a Game Boy Color. Um, they have that super, super, super tiny uh, D-pad. And it's hard. It's fine to go up, down, left, and right. But if you have to navigate, you know, kind of in between there, it's definitely it can be a little bit hard to do. This is a good size D-pad. Now, the analog stick looks small. If I put my thumb over it, you can see that it covers the entire thing, all the edges and everything. So when I first saw this, I thought, all right, that's going to be a problem, especially if you're, um, you know, an adult with bigger thumbs. It's going to be hard to maneuver that. Now, I didn't even put the grips on here. It comes with six different grips, um, all different designed heads. So it grips differently for each one. Uh, I didn't even put them on there and I had no issues with this. You know, you can maneuver just fine. There's no issues. It's super tight. It's not... Um, it's not a loose joystick by any means. Uh, you can see in Gauntlet Legends, I'm using this entirely to maneuver the character around the game. No issues whatsoever, so I was really impressed by that. It's nice to have something that's really compact and small that also works well. So now if you are considering getting one of these, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. I think it's a super great value here. Um, if you purchase this from our website with our game collection card, which includes over 16,674 games to be exact, uh, you're looking at 225 it also comes with a soft carrying case, which is really nice. You can throw this, the power supply in it, throw it in a suitcase, throw it in the car, and you're good to go. So this, in terms of scores, this compares with the JXD S192K handheld console. That goes for just under $400. This goes for 225 stocked with all the games, much less if you're just buying the console itself. So it's it's really a no-brainer. Uh, I don't have enough nice things to say about this. You know, Pow Kitty has really knocked it out of the park with this particular console. You know, everything about it just works super well. So, you know, that's gonna do it for today. I think that we've gone over every aspect of this particular handheld. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to comment on the video, reach out to us directly through our website, whatever you need to do. We're here for you. We're happy to respond to questions um, and help you in any way we can. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We do a whole bunch of gameplay demos, reviews, uh, tutorials, and then, of course, check us out on our website, www.retropieguy.com. Thanks for watching.